this is Warps, and welcome to my tools guide and various other items. I have 240 hours in this game now, and I have many tricks. Let me show you. First, we'll start with keys. Besides opening locks, these things are amazing lightning rods for stormy weather. Lightning, from my testing, appears to spawn in a set area and target an item in that range. You can take a few keys and sprinkle them around a store drop pod and buy a single cheap item, which is usually the walkie but sales can happen, to bait dogs into surrounding the store pod and attacking it, causing them to get taken out by the lightning for almost free. That's kind of rude. You can also wait until your key starts sparking and bait a dog into investigating your location by walking near them and then dropping it. The item dropping noise will attract the dog, leading to its doom. People usually have a cupboard full of keys stockpiled. You can take advantage of this on stormy weather by sprinkling them away from important paths so that lightning doesn't randomly strike or intentionally strike your allies' items when they're bringing stuff back. Stormy can be turned into an easy weather hazard, or even one that helps you by using this trick. You may not have expected this thing to be useful, but it does have a purpose. The switches being on the left means the power to that sector is on, to the right is off. This controls the lighting, and any closed pressurized doors will open if they lose power. So you can use the fuse box if you have no terminal guy to open and close certain doors in a pinch, provided they are already closed. You can even trap coil heads with nobody in the ship using the terminal. As long as you have one buddy to bait them into one of these doors, you switch the fuse and then once he is successfully in the area you put the fuse back on trapping him you can also open this if you do have a ship guy these can occasionally start in the off position cutting off lighting and door power to certain areas of the map so it's nice if you do have a terminal user to open this up and flip all the switches to the on position the walkie-talkie costs $12 lasts for over a full day. Keep it on at the start and you can use the battery bar as a clock. I will show a time lapse in the background while I'm talking about this so you can know what time is what battery percent. You can press Q to toggle it on and off and hold left click with it in your hand to speak into it. If you are around dogs, you will want to turn it off as they can hear it and will attack you. You can receive walkie talkie chatter without having it in your hand, but it must be on. Two walkies is usually enough to let the terminal operator assist the indoor group, or it can get confusing with three or more people being on one line, as there will be a lot of crosstalk. You can always drop these to make room for loot if needed, so don't be afraid to bring one, because you figure you'll have to drop it. It's only 12 bucks. You can replace it. It's worth the extra loot item. You can also use text chat at a distance which can help if there are dogs in the area if multiple people have walkies on in their inventory you can press the slash key on your keyboard and use text chat this is usually limited by proximity just like voice chat but with walkies you can do it over a long distance which will avoid triggering dogs it's also often much clearer to use text chat because voice chat is a little scuffed over the walkie sometimes the flashlight and pro flashlight these don't have too much to cover. The flashlight's $15, the Pro is $25. The Pro weighs a little bit. The regular flashlight weighs nothing. The battery life of the regular flashlight is two and a half minutes. The Pro flashlight is five minutes. The Pro is a lot better usually, and the beam is further, which can help looking at long distances on indoor maps to tell where the dead ends are. You should usually flick these on and off as you look around as needed rather than just leaving them on as you will run out of battery if you don't do that. Feel free to drop these if you need to get a loot item as you can always buy them back. Stock up if they're on sale. The shovel or equivalent item, such as a stop sign or a yield sign, is pretty much required. Someone needs to have one or you will suffer. Spiders and thumpers will turn from evacuation-worthy threats to merely speed bumps. Has a slight wind-up to the attack. Hold your mouse button down before you intend to swing and release it when you actually want to swing. It's kind of like a bow and arrow. You can kill loot bugs in three hits by circling them or jousting them. Thumpers can be dealt with in four hits if you play aggressively in space, as hitting them will slow them down severely, allowing you to back up. You can also circle sprint around them or get on a rail. Spiders can be dealt with exactly the same way. Dogs can be taken down in 12 hits, but those require special combat methods that are covered more in my creature guide video. 
Snare fleas can be smacked off of your teammate's head or your own head since you can pick your own weapon back up after you drop it. Be careful not to continue smacking your teammate after the snare flea falls off as you will kill them. You can kill your teammates pretty easily with these things. If you're ever trying to fight something and your back is to a wall or any object, you might hit the thing behind you, including your teammates. If your teammate is hiding behind you and you're swinging a shovel, they'll probably die. The Boombox has about a six minute battery life, plays funky beats, allowing good vibes to permeate the crew. Will speed up slimes significantly when in range of them, but they are not attracted to the boombox and will only follow players. This can be used to transport the slime into some random dead end room, like this one, with a regular door to lock it away, as they can't pass through regular doors. Having a boombox at the entrance can sometimes assist people finding the door. Bring one if you want to stop slimes specifically, as they are pretty annoying sometimes. As a note, I did test the shovel on the slime to see if it would actually move faster, like some people say. The difference, if there is any, is so small that I wouldn't recommend doing it. It honestly looks the same, but for some reason the aggressive jiggling makes it look faster. The lock picker, 20 bucks, pretty heavy doesn't get struck by lightning. Opens as many doors as you want, but will take 30 seconds for each one. That's about it. Take them into fire escapes, as there will often be locked doors. The extension ladder. Costs 60, weighs nothing. Lightning will strike it, but only if you have not bought it that round. If you buy one that round, it is immune to lightning. Deployable ladder that will stay out for 20 seconds, then retract on its own. Will kill players if it lands on them, but will not damage enemies. Nearly useless indoors unless you have a friend that like really sucks at jumping over gaps. You can deploy them a little bridge. The ladder allows for certain shortcuts such as being able to access the offense fire escape or the dine fire escape which is what I'm showing currently. Now there are alternative ways onto both. You actually don't need a ladder for either of these. For offense as the ship is landing you can leap onto the pipe from the rail pretty easily and for dine you can just jump up the little path on the side where you would normally put the ladder both of these are good spots and some people can't easily do those things so the ladder makes it smoother for your whole team to get up as opposed to just you know you who's watched this video and are now an expert funny enough the best use for the ladder right now is probably this very sped up titan looting strat you just drop a bunch of items to that little landing below the front door and you take the ladder, put it at a bit of a sideways angle up against that corner, go all the way to the end of the ladder. Important, or the stuff will fall on a staircase and not right in front of the ship. Do this right and you save a ton of time and can haul massive amounts of stuff back. Yeah, this is probably the place I actually use the ladder the most. The radar booster, 50 bucks. Kind of heavy. These are intended to be viewed by the terminal operator as sort of a pseudo player that you can see on the screen so you can keep track of what's there. However, it's kind of useless for that. So I usually use them as an infinite weak AoE flashlight that can also be pinged from the terminal. Your radar booster will have a name assigned to it. Turn it on and you can flip to the ship cameras and you'll see the name and the viewpoint. You can set up a fun little ping system with teammates, such as telling them that you'll ping the radar if they're going the wrong way, which you can repeatedly do until they're going the right way. This system can be expanded however you wish, copy pasting the terminal commands or using Mac Macros is recommended if you want to do this, as it's kind of annoying to type ping name every time. The stun grenade. The first click pulls the pin, the second will throw the grenade. It will explode about three seconds after the pin is pulled, stunning most enemies in range. The range isn't that amazing, it's like okay. Notably useful for stunning giants and saving teammates from their grasp, or yourself. If you pull the pin before you get grabbed, it'll blow up in your hand, which will also save you and blind you. These are kind of overpriced. 40 bucks, eh, if they're on sale, grab a few, it's decent. You can use the dummy grenade, which is what you get after any grenade explodes to blow up mines, which is kind of useful, but they can often get stuck and fall through the ground. TZP Inhalant, 120 bucks, overpriced helium, enhances your speed 
and slipperiness reduces your stamina consumption and blinds you in an even ratio. You want to go faster, you're also blinder. This item is usually not worth buying unless on a big sale, and even then it's questionable. It's kind of a fun item, but if you huff it for just long enough to only go slightly blind, you can transport beehives more conveniently since you'll have enough stamina. You can run away from other things too and transport items back faster, but it is costly to use this thing and kind of difficult as you won't be able to see where you're going. Being super fast and super blind is really not a superpower that I often want. Great item to buy if you know you're going to lose as you can have fun as it will add a voice modifier to people's in-game microphones which makes them talk all high-pitched and stuff and you can have your friends sound like chipmunks. The bell at the company when you're trying to sell items also sounds funny when you have this item. If you have an empty canister, you can also shake it, which is fun. If you take less of it, you can use it without being totally blind and still have a pretty good stamina consumption ratio. You can see by the stamina that I've used in these clips, it's like, yeah, the one where I huffed it for like the entire time, I had almost like eternal stamina. This one, I, it's still pretty good. Like that's, that's a pretty heavy reduction for still being able to see. I, I just happened to find some lightning bees while recording this clip, circuit bees, so I, I just grabbed it. And I did find out that beehives actually get struck by lightning, which is interesting. I did not know that. Yeah, you can just straight up lose circuit bees. This goes so fast and for so far, which creates a problem, as that's a death swarm that'll kill your teammates. But that's their problem. The loud horn, a ship tool. Pulling the cord makes a loud noise that can be heard anywhere in the match, including in the facility. An alert system can be set up however you want, similar to the radar booster where one pole means this, two poles means this, long pole means this. I recommend long pole means there's dogs around the ship as that will also attract them to the place opposite of the door getting them out of the way. I'm also showing here how this back corner is a little bit dangerous. That spot is kind of considered outside and if you make noise there the dogs will attack from there instead of coming in the ship. The teleporter, 375 bucks, can recover bodies, which is very convenient as you won't lose much money. You can teleport someone by selecting them on the ship camera with the little buttons on the monitor and then pressing the red button. After a short delay, they will be brought to the teleporter. All of their items will be dropped on the ground where they were. You can save people from the grasp of giants even slightly after they get picked up. You can save them if they have a snare flea on their head and you can save them if they're just trapped somewhere, which can happen if the inverse teleporter puts them in a locked room. You can usually tell a teammate is dead on the monitor if they have not moved for a very long time. Try not to do it too early. Sometimes people just sit still, and if you teleport someone back when they don't want to, it's very painful for them emotionally. And it's sometimes better to just let people die, especially if you're not planning on going back. Teleporting them back is equivalent to them dying. It is a failed run. They bring nothing back. Their body is worth everything, really. So as long as you recover the body, they're fine. Just let them try, you know? Let them suffer. The inverse teleporter, 425 bucks has this little yellow hazard tape on the teleporter. Anyone in range kind of standing on it or the edges will get warped into the facility randomly, including on top of landmines potentially, places you normally can't reach, or on the edge of cliffs. So have fun with that. Be very careful when you go in. You might spawn in a locked room, so the guy will have to teleport you back out from the ship, or you will just be sealed. There's also this fun little trick where you Press the yellow button slightly before the red button, and whoever you have targeted on the monitor will be whisked away randomly into the facility, and they'll have no idea what happened. Now for a brief overview of the terminal. This thing is complex. I know a lot of things about this, and it is incredibly powerful. I'll do a full guide on that soon, so watch for that. You can see what your teammates are doing. You can look at all the turret spawns, the landmines. You can open and close the doors, sealing coil heads or other threats. You can pre-seal rooms that have monster spawners in them, which are the little red lines. Those are the vents, and those spawn monsters. If you seal rooms with those, you can trap them before they ever even annoy your team. So you can use a radio to communicate with your friends to tell them where to go. 
you can turn off turrets so they don't die. They only stay off a temporary period of time, like five-ish seconds, but that's usually enough for them to get by. If they step on a landmine and somehow don't move oh off like most people God. do, you can toggle the landmine off, allowing them to walk off of it. Once you've played enough, you can recognize what all of these little dots are and why. There's a coil head, there's one of those lizard doggos, that is a loot bug, and the other thing is probably a thumper, but it could be a bracken. The zap gun. 400 bucks, weighs a bit. You can tase enemies with this. It'll put a, out a little scan field, and if there's an enemy inside of that, or a teammate, it will begin zapping them with a lightning beam. You have to kind of wrestle the lightning beam to the center. It'll keep trying to go off to the right or the left. You just just move your mouse like right or left to wrestle it back in. And you can taste something for your entire energy bar if you do this. So your teammates will have a chance to smack things with shovels. Because that's really the only time you're going to be using this. Because if you don't have a teammate to smack things with a shovel, there's kind of no point. It's... It's kind of it's kind of useful, but it's not as well. If you really want to have like a a smacking squad, you can do that. You can, you can zap pretty much everything. The forest giants won't care much, but they will drop your teammate until you stop zapping them. Then they will pick them back up. So you better run like really fast. You can kill brackens like this. One of the only legit ways to kill them besides like stun grenades. Otherwise, you're gonna have to be rail cheesing them. So it's okay. It's kind of pricey for what it does. And lastly, the vent. The vent is a monster spawner. It takes seemingly about 60 seconds for the monster to spawn after it starts making this slapping noise in the vent. Sounds like somebody just taking their hand and smacking around in the vent. That is the sound of a monster spawning. I sat here and I just waited. I cut some of this off, but it was about like 50-ish seconds from when I heard it to when this came out. And these things have different concentrations in areas of the facility. So that's where the monsters will be. You can seal these behind pressure doors, which Jesus. is nice. Oh God. Thanks for watching. I got more guides coming up. Like, comment, subscribe, all that.